Yesterday I did a video on Kenny Smith responding to Charles Barkley's comments about the Eric Gardner case. And um, I read you guys the open letter statement that he had addressed to the public. And today, you know, we had Stephen A. Smith come out and react to Kenny Smith's comments towards Charles Barkley. And we all know how, you know, Stephen A. Smith gets down. You know, we all know some of the antics he pulls and some of the... Um, you know, outlandish comments that he makes on his radio show show or on first tape. And, you know, I did get a chance to listen to the audio, which I will play in a couple of minutes. But, you know, I, I don't think Stephen A. Smith really understand what Kenny Smith really was saying. You see, in the media, they like people like Charles Barkley because Charles Barkley is the type of guy that he's going to say what a pleases white media and what it pleases white people. That's why they try to put Charles Barkley in the Reverend Al Sharpner category or, you know, as this, you know, great black athlete that has the courage to come out and speak. He doesn't have the courage to come out and say anything. He says what he knows the media and white folks want to hear. And that's what I don't think Stephen A. Smith is understanding. But then, as we know, Stephen A. Smith comes out here and coons a lot. So, of course, he's going to disagree with Kenny Smith basically checking Charles Barkley on his comments and calling those people out there that were that were riding or whatever scumbags. Now I don't agree with the whole looting and everything, but also I understand that we have a group of people and remind you it's not just black folks out there that are doing this. We got people who are opportunists that are going out there using the situation to come up on, you know, some material objects. Let me put that out there. But we have a group of people in this country pertaining to black folks that have been disemprovident, that have not gotten justice in this country. And a lot of times, you know, the only time they feel like they can be heard or rights could be, you know, uh, addressing their matter is to go out here and, and loot. I don't condone it, but I understand the frustration and anger that a lot of these people are dealing with. But I'm going to go ahead and play you guys the audio of what uh, Stephen A. Smith you know, said about uh, Kenny Smith and regarding the whole situation. And I want you guys to give me your feedback in the comment section. You know, let me know whether you agree with Stephen A. Smith, whether you disagree, whether you had a different perspective. This particular subject as it pertains to Kenny Smith and Charles Barkley is because Kenny Smith is essentially saying that the media and the like hold Charles Barkley in such high regard and treat him with such reverence and deference that he's mentioned in the same breath as Al Sharpton and President Obama. And Kenny Smith has a problem with that. And for me, ladies and gentlemen, I don't understand why Kenny Smith has a problem with that. Because, see, to me, when you look at this country, this nation of ours, sometimes, sometimes, people who may be a bit less informed who may not be as knowledgeable, who can never be confused as being or an expert. Sometimes it takes their bravery to tackle issues so that the people who should have been heard from all along would have the courage themselves to speak up. Or dare I say society as a whole would show a willingness to listen to them. Charles Barkley always speaks his mind. Charles Barkley, you ask him a question, he'll give you an answer. Some would say, Stephen A. Smith, same exact way. I try to be as informed as I possibly can, and more importantly, when I'm not informed, I will be the first to acknowledge it. But when somebody says, you shouldn't even be speaking on an issue, then it gets considerably dangerous. Because when you're advocating silence, particularly on the part of those who have voices and, their, and, and more importantly, a platform for their voices to be heard. How are you going to get anywhere? Where are you going to go? What are you truly going to accomplish? That's the issue for me. Because on far too many occasions when we look at some of these guys, see, America, you'll sit out there and you'll want these athletes to shut up. You don't want them to say anything. You want them to perform and go to hell home and keep their mouths shut. But the second they do so, you're saying, where are they? You want to sit there and you want to say, well, your role models, your role models, your role models. So you want to dictate how they act. But when they speak, you want to dictate that too. At some point in time,
time as a nation, we've got to make up our minds. And we have to, as a nation, be intelligent enough to decipher somebody who's just giving an opinion from the periphery as opposed to those who are experts and may be incredibly knowledgeable about a situation and therefore feel compelled to enlighten us about things that we may not know. We have an obligation to decipher the difference. But in my opinion, particularly to those who have a platform, should somebody ever be encouraged to shut up, not to say anything, when they have the platform that a Charles Barkley has? I'd say absolutely not. And although we live in a different time, what about Muhammad Ali? What about Jim Brown? What about Bill Russell? What about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? What about when all of them stood behind Muhammad Ali? When he refused to enter the military to participate in the Vietnam War, to serve. He was excoriated. He was stripped of the heavyweight crown. His livelihood was taken away from him. He was denigrated and excoriated. He was accused of being un-American. What is he now? Ali is not Ali because Ali is a three-time undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Ali is Ali because of what he represented to a nation of individuals, to a disenfranchised community that appreciated his courage and his willingness to speak up when few others were willing to do so. Let me pause right there for a minute. Muhammad Ali spoke up for the injustice for black Americans. He did not come out here and coon and say what the white media wants him to say. Now, you know, no disrespect to Joe Lewis, but Joe Lewis is more of, you know, quote unquote company mail. You know, more of, you know, I'm going to do what uh, white folks want me to do so that I can seem like the American idol. So when we talk about boxes like that, Joe Lewis and Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali stood for the integrity of black Americans. He didn't come out here like Charles Barkley, throw his people under the bus for a paycheck. Because he could have easily done that, Mr. Smith. Now these are not those times. This is not the 1960s or the 1970s. We have evolved as a, as a society. We have improved as a society. And more importantly, the argument that there are too many voiceless individuals out there no longer applies. Not in this world, in this age of social media. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen? If you don't have a conscious bone in your body, you might as well be silent. Because you ain't saying anything worth hearing if you're not conscientious. That's the reality. So I respectfully disagree with Kenny Smith's position because he seemed to resent the fact that Barkley's opinion was disseminated. He seemed to resent the point that Barkley and what he had to say would be held in high regard. And I guess when he pointed out the media, he's saying how folks in the media are so quick to pursue somebody like Barkley's opinion as opposed to somebody, dare we say, is more informed. Actually, that's not true. Everybody gets heard from. No, they don't. It's just that some resonate and some don't. You hear politicians speak, sounds like the same old song and dance. You hear civil rights activists speak, okay, that's relatively predictable what they're going to say. You hear Barkley speak, you don't know what's coming out of his mouth. You hear Stephen A. speak, you don't know what's coming out of my mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, I got news for you. I am not about to read the entire letter of Kenny Smith's over the airways for this show. Nor am I going to do the same with Charles Barkley. I'd encourage you to Google and YouTube and hear what both and read what both had to say. But I got news for you. They're both right. And they're both wrong. Charlie, Charles Barkley should not be calling people scumbags. And thugs. Neither should have the St. Louis Police Association the other day when 
when they were upset at Rams protesters. Kenny Smith, to me, was wrong to sit there and say that Charles Barkley really shouldn't say much. And that his opinion shouldn't be pursued by those within the media who may want to hear what he has to say. But just like Kenny Smith was wrong, he was absolutely right about the sensitivities emanating from the African American community from an historical standpoint as to why there's so much angst, there's so much disgust, there's so much anger at yet a third, a third black individual killed and no type of prosecution has taken place whatsoever. Well, at least in this case, second. Because there was a trial with the whole Trayvon Martin. None to the outrage. He's right about that. He's right about the sensitivities emanating from the black community. Remember, everybody, George Zimmerman got a chance to go home, take a shower, clean his ass, and go get something to eat before they even came and brought him into the police station. But you guys give me your feedback.